pretty deep right here. When I introduced this property a few weeks back, I referenced this ditch uh, as a potential access ditch. So I immediately put on the project list, cleaning this out so it'd be walkable. And uh, that's what we we're doing today, but it turned into a little bit of a two-part project, a little messier job than I anticipated. Some of the water where, where I like to, would like to drop down, clear back there, was pretty deep. And uh, I wasn't sure if that's just how the ditch laid or not, but I got down here and noticed that some of it was dammed up and kind of just cluttered up with a bunch of debris. Cleared that out, it's flowing pretty good now. So hopefully that means we can drop in sooner rather than having to come down the ditch a little bit. But we got cleared out, got a bunch of branches cut. That's where these little battery powered saws come in really handy. Uh, Owen and Caleb been using these Spartan saws from Kaufman a bunch of times this spring. I just got mine in the mail the other day and uh, it's sweet. You know, I have a gas powered chainsaw at home, which is good for, you know, maybe some heavier duty ones, but for for walking the ditch and wanting to stay lightweight, this thing is, is pretty slick. It's made by Spartan, but we've, we all got ours from Kaufman down in Seoul, Missouri. So definitely check those out if you're looking for something like that. It was very handy on this project. The primary reason I wanted to get this ditch cleared to this spot is this walnut tree over my shoulder. It probably will be the first stand I hang on this property. Without any food or anything here, I think this would still be a good spot. There's a lot of stuff that comes together here. The two main creeks meet just down the way and there's a ton of different crossings. A little bit of a pinch on this side with a narrow strip of timber. But I do think it could be a really enhanced spot with some food, just a little green plot right here. And I'll kind of walk out there and show you how I want to shape it. That's kind of the fun part of having a blank slate like this. But this one I can envision being a really, really cool spot to hunt. So that was the primary reason for this ditch. Um, very excited about this spot. I've been just walking around, uh, just checking it out. A lot of scrapes over here. Um, just a really good travel corridor and it, I think it would be enhanced with a little green plot. Like I mentioned, the design part of a blank slate property is a fun, the fun part of this and I think what I'll probably do with this spot is maybe figure eight this plot in between these two trees you know open it up on either side and make the deer come through this gap which to that walnut tree is about a 30 yard shot but just let them funnel out and then they can spread out once they get past the stand but I think that'll work out really nicely it just kind of flows with this whole little peninsula here you can see the tree in the background, not the most ideal tree. I don't love hanging in walnuts just because they lose their cover so early, but it's in the right spot and I'll be able to add my own cover. There's some cedar branches or some, some fake oak leaves or something uh, that can just stay up in that tree. So it'll be in the right location. Like I mentioned before, this is a good spot with or without food. There's a ton of natural trails that basically head out to the destination ag fields. So I'm just enhancing a little bit. It's just a spot that makes sense to put a little food. But man, this will be a really cool spot. I can't wait for the first hunt out of this location. All right, guys, today we're setting up the new Hoyt. We just got this in. This is the Ventum Pro. I believe this is a 33 inch axle to axle bow. So we're going to go through step by step and show you how I set this up and paper tune it and everything else. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to check is my draw length and my cam timing. I'm shooting for 29 and a half or 29 and 3 eighths on the draw length. And then of course, we'll, while we've got it at full draw, we'll look at our cam timing as well. Now we're gonna stop right when that 
when your draw stops hit the string there that's going to be where you want to check your draw length and you can see where both of these are hitting if they're at the same time or not so it looks like the bottom cams hitting just a little bit before the top it's not by much so you can look at what we've got for draw length right at 29 and 3 8 so that's what we need there and I know these measurements because I've written all this stuff down on my previous bows so you want to keep records of all this stuff all right let's go to our accessories over here the first thing I always go to on any new bow is a set of custom strings these are BCY 452X I believe is what this is made out of this is their top of the line once you shoot these in you shouldn't have any stretch with them so that's what we're shooting for now that we know our cam timing is very close if not right on I'm gonna mark these cams and that's gonna play in when we put these strings and cables on we'll check each time to see if our cam rotation is correct or if we need to make an adjustment so we have got this side marked that's with a paint marker now I'm gonna mark the other side with a regular marker in case something happens to those marks I'll have another set all right we've got that done now let's go put our strings on all right now we're gonna do these one at a time so we can check timing all right now make sure we got this going the right direction so here's your here's your string for your peep so we just got to make sure that's toward the top all right now we'll make sure everything's in the groove before we let the pressure off all right let's look at these cams and see what we got if anything they're just a skosh tight like maybe a millimeter but I think you shoot that 10 times and they'll be right deadly so we're not going to make any adjustments there we're going to go to the cables now and do those one at a time that way you can tell if you need to adjust one or the other so we got the last cable on got the string on let's see what we got here marks are deadly all right we got that part done now we're going to go put the rest in the sight on all right guys we took a little intermission yesterday it was so windy i wasn't sure if our audio was even going to be usable this building was shaking and rattling so we're back at it here today we left off we just put this rest on and now we've got to set a knock point and i'll do that before i do the center shot because i use the arrow to look down for my center shot i'm gonna start with this arrow just level so if you were using a square tool you'd come back and you'd be about probably three sixteenths above square to have that arrow just sitting level so all right i'm gonna do five knots on the top and to finish that we're gonna do a square knot now when you do this bottom one you want just a slight like maybe one millimeter of a gap in between those you don't want that to be completely tight otherwise when you come to full draw that string is going to pinch your knock and if it pinches it tight enough that arrow might float off the rest so you want just a tiny gap there when you come to full draw that'll fill in so all right so when you tie your loop on you want to put the the top and the bottom on opposite sides but you want to do it so it's got the natural twist already started the way you're gonna have your release so when I draw back I want to be angled like this so you want to put the top on the left side of the string and the bottom on the right instead of doing it opposite then you're really twisting up that loop when you draw back all right now this is the tricky part I like my loop about 9 sixteenths from the string to the inside part of the loop so to try and get this stretched just about the way I want it here actually you want to leave it just a little just a little short because it's going to stretch in a little bit yet 
about 11 sixteenths. I'm gonna see if I can shorten that up just a tad. So now I'm gonna adjust my center shot. It's normally I'm gonna be about 11 13 or 11 sixteenths to 13 sixteenths from my riser out to the center of the arrow. But what I like to do for starters is just line up my string down my cams and then have my arrow cut right down the center. And I usually end up just a hair inside of that, but that's a good starting point, so. All right, so I've got my Fuse three pin slider here. Now what I do is I take the red out because that gives me the most halo. When I'm looking at red, I get a little halo around that and the green and yellow seem to be better for my eyes. So I shoot this as a two pin. I'll set it in for 20 and 30. And then anything past that, you know, I can shoot out to about 32, 33 with it set just like that. And then anything past that, I'll dial up my actual yardage. So, all right, now we've got to level that sight. So this is where your string level comes in handy. So as long as that's level back there, you can level your sight to that. The one thing I like to do is make sure I start with this clear up top and I can adjust my pins a little bit based on that. Or you can move this whole bracket yeah, right here, there's two holes. You can move that whole thing. That way you got the whole range of motion here when you set your sight scale on there. Now I've got my bow tipped down. This is the third axis adjustment right here. If your scope housing's tilted back towards your bow or tilted forward, your bubble will be off when you shoot, you know, steep uphill or steep downhill. So that's what this third axis adjustment is for. All right, close enough for government work. We got that baby dialed. Now we've got to, now that we've got our sight housing, we're gonna pick out our peep sight. Now what I like to do here is I want a peep sight that's large enough to gather light. So I'm gonna be up around a quarter inch peep, maybe 3 16ths on the small side, but I try to size it so at full draw, it's just slightly bigger than this housing. And so what that does for you, if you move out of your peep just a little bit, you can see it changing that housing right there. So. Now, of course, depending on where you position this peep is gonna change the rotation of the peep. So we're not gonna get too concerned with that yet until I go put that peep right where it needs to be. This is new to me as well. So we'll see if we can figure this bad boy out. It'll need to be longer than that. All right, I forgot about the quiver. We've got one more thing to put on the bow and then we're ready to start paper tuning. Let's give her a go, see what happens here. What we got? Pretty much perfect left and right, and so we're gonna have to raise that knock just a hair, maybe a sixteenth. Thing of beauty deadly on the money so there you have it start to finish set up the only thing i'm going to do in addition to that is like i said a french tune or a walk back tune then i've just got to sight it in so i'll let you know how that goes but i appreciate you guys joining us again we'll see you right back here again next monday